Hey, everyone. Hey everybody, this is Danger Cosplay moderating for uh, Mike, uh, Technicolor Mike B, uh, who's going to teach us today about grease paint for cosplay. All right, um, I'm probably going to take the headsets off. Um, I can have the live stream through my speakers, but for whatever reason, the uh, uh, the video conference only comes through the headset. So, uh, but I think the microphone will still work. Too much. Um, so I got a, a little bit of a head start uh, trying to get half the face done and ready to go. Um, really hadn't decided what I was going to do. I was somewhat thinking of Darth Maul and went a slightly different direction. But this is all done. I guess this side. <laughs> this is all done with grease paint. Um, it is set. So the makeup um, is dry to the touch, and uh, it's ready to either add more colors and do other things, or to to go to a con. Um, a little bit about my background: I've been into the Halloween theme since who knows how long. Uh, was painting my face with face paints from Walmart back in the college days, uh, twelve years ago. I attended my very first clown convention, and for that I learned to work with theatrical grease paint uh, for the clown makeup, and that led to being able to do a little better Halloween makeups, and eventually uh, I discovered cosplay. Um, so yes, uh, I am a clown. I do uh, balloons and face paintings at parties, so sometimes my uh, approach to face paint or makeup design is a little bit more based on uh, how a face painter does it versus how a, um, a, a cosplayer would do it. Um, and also from the clown background, I've learned about how to accentuate your features of your face so that your makeup really can express your emotions, that if you place your colors and highlights in the right spot, um, as you smile or make faces, the makeup will move and sort of help carry the emotion out to your audience. So, let's see. Which way is it? <laughs> have to get my left and right uh, working again. Yeah, no, especially on the face around the where the real muscles are really pulling. It's a really dramatic effect. All right. um, I missed that. Oh, no, I was just commenting. Yeah, you can see it's a really dramatic effect along your cheekbones. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was going for a, a little bit more uh, dramatic. I was watching uh, Rosie's uh, presentation, and she was going for the subtle look. I went for the more dramatic, uh, sort of more alien-esque uh, approach. And uh, as opposed to it being a, a flat red color, with the highlights and the shadows. It, it really adds a lot of depth and character to the design. Um, I am using Mayron uh, foundation grease paint. Uh, I have a variety of colors, yellow, blue, black, orange, um, and obviously the, the clown white for the white. Um, with Grease paint, you don't have quite the wide selection of colors that you do with the, uh, the water-based uh, face paints that you're basically stuck to the uh, skin tones and one red, one blue, one green, one yellow, one orange. Um, but I, I mix my colors on the fly, um, and since I do blending and highlighting, whatever color I'm starting with, I'm going to make it lighter with a, a white or darker with a black. If I'm working with an orange, I can make it lighter with a yellow and darker with a red. Uh, with blue, you can make it darker with a purple. So when you mix two colors together, you can create the shades that you're trying to accomplish. Um, I guess I'll get started with the second side of the face. And um, I'm going to do blue just to sort of give it a, a different look. My 
favorite tool is my hand. Um, I work everything off my hand. Um, but before I begin, I do try to keep my face um, this side. <laughs> Make sure it's nice and clean. Any of the oils have been removed. I've, I've shaved. I've got it uh, as clean as can be. I don't do any uh, special skin prep. I don't stick my hand in into the makeup. It's, there's the camera. Um, I use the end of a brush and pull off uh, enough makeup to get started. And I just put it onto the, the back of my hand. The grease paint is, um, it's a solid liquid state and it acts it, with your skin temperature, it will warm up a bit and it will soften as it warms up. So by putting it on my hand, I can, I can warm it up and make it a little bit easier to, to move. I can also massage it on the back of my hand. Um, if I'm doing a large area, my hand, my fingers, they're the best approach. Um, I don't have to use something small. I know Rosie was using a sponge, but I just use my hands. Since this makeup is still wet, if I wanted to, if I was making a mistake, I could just rub it off still. I guess that answers our viewer question. That, uh, if grease paint is easy to remove. That side isn't going to come off, but the, the, the makeup side will, which allows you, if you're, uh, depending on the design you're working on, um, sometimes if I know I'm going to do a different color in an area and I don't want the two colors to blend in, I can use a Q-tip and sort of wipe away a section of the makeup. And that sort of creates a line where I can to work from. I don't have too much blue on there to, to work it. Um, but that's, while, while the makeup it hasn't set, you could still remove whatever you've been working on and start over again. So let's go back to applying it. And with the grease paint, a little bit can go a long way. Each color has its own consistency and coverage red is a very um, light color. It, the, the makeup is very um, liquidy and flows and covers very easily. Uh, this blue is a little bit drier and stiffer, so it doesn't cover quite as well. Um, but just a toothbrush uh, size amount or amount of toothpaste you'd use on your toothbrush can cover a good amount of your face. I might not go quite as far as I did on the red and get all the, the sides and neck just for speed purposes. Yeah, well, Mike is doing his demo. He doesn't have his headphones on. So keep asking questions. I'm going to keep track of them and we will have a Q&A at the end. That is very blue. Then once you get an area covered, I um, the best way to even it out and get any of the finger marks out is to pat the makeup. That just takes the high areas and pulls a little makeup away. And the low areas 
adds a little bit back. And that can even out colors. One thing I've learned when I'm doing cosplay makeup is bring your own lights with you. I've been in a hotel with uh, the rooms just don't have bright lights. And I find that if I'm doing my makeup in a dim room, I won't see the colors quite as effectively and um once i get out into like daylight and it's like oh my gosh the the makeup is too pale um so it's always good to bring your own lights when you're traveling um so now i have a base coat of blue that we could go on to adding some of the highlights and shadows at this point, I haven't set the makeup on the blue side, and that's um, going to allow me to blend colors a little bit better. Um, I know Rosie in the last panel, if you were watching, most of her, her highlighting was with powders. For me, my highlighting and shadows is with grease paint. Um, and I'll, I'll do a little bit at the base coat, and then I'll do more highlights and shadows after it's powdered and sort of like the, the final details that um, hopefully I'll be able to show a little bit later on uh, the difference of working on the wet, let's see, the wet side and the dry side with makeup. So I've just added a little white to my hand. I just work it in, creating a highlight. Oh, sorry, you're totally correct. I muted myself because of my really annoying dogs. Um, no, I was just commenting on the effect and seeing how cool it's coming together. And it definitely, from both Rosie's panel and now the grease paint cosplay makeup panel, uh, blending and blending and blending seems to be the key, what I'm picking up on. I was getting really strong Yondu vibes with the uh, with the mullet. Now not so much. We're going very alien. And with uh, the blue, I can either use black or purple to darken it. So we'll try purple. See if uh, this one's works. Otherwise, we'll switch to black. And whenever you add a highlight, a shadow next to it is going to really stand out. So the, 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 the dark and the light side by side work well together. It's cool. It's almost like it's creating like a, like a ridge effect.
And again, you guys, while we uh, watch this transformation happen, while we watch Mike work, if you guys have any questions, I know he can't hear you right now since um, he's had to take his headphones off for the demonstration, but keep them coming. I'm keeping track. Um, I've seen your questions and we'll have a Q&A at the end of the stream. All right, now I just uh, add a little bit darker with the black. And the, the more fine the detail, I switch somewhat away from the fingers. I'll still blend a little with the fingers, but I'll apply it with the brush just to get a little bit more uh, control over placement. When I've uh, worked in a Halloween haunted house, or I did uh, help to make up on Wizard of Oz, um, instead of sticking my fingers in other people's face, if they were teens and older, I used to have got them put the base layer of makeup on. I'll just sort of say smeared all over your face, and then um, I'll do the details with the brushes so I'm not having to stick my hand in everyone else's face. Um, not everyone is comfortable having a, a makeup artist hand. That's also probably a good COVID tip right now. Touch your own face. Don't touch your neighbor's face. And wash your damn hands. Very menacing now especially with that, that black. Definitely works for a more menacing vibe. All right, so now the red and black side, or red and blue side look similar, um, but if I, uh, if I paint on the red side where the makeup has been set, I'm painting uh, more on top, I'm adding a new layer. Why paint on the blue side where it hasn't been set, it's still wet, so it, it blends in a little better. Um, so that one of the advantages of setting the makeup when I'm uh, painting on that side, I'm able to sort of lay a new color. So it's like if I want a white, it's going to stay white. If I'm adding black, it's going to stay black. On the wet side, it's going to turn into a gray or a pink or a lighter shade of blue. Um, so that uh, that's the advantage of so at this point I would normally uh, set the blue side and so I consider the base layer done and then go come back and continue um, since I don't really want to run away from the computer and I don't want to get uh, uh, the powder all over the place I'm going to just work on the red side for now to set the makeup I use wonderful Johnson's and Johnson's uh, baby powder this is the pure talc version. Um, I know there's controversy of whether you use the talc version or the cornstarch version. I use the talc version. I've heard that a lot of people say the cornstarch is the food product so that um, you don't really want to be uh, using that on your makeup. Um, but to each their own. So if I do the black uh, makeup on the, the right side, it is going to stay black. Yeah, so like Mike was saying earlier, he's uh, kind of working now towards a little bit the red side. It sounds like these grease paints are almost like oil paints where um, you can kind of wait for them to dry if you want to build up more extreme layers. Um, so he's kind of let the red side dry and now we're getting some like really cool dramatic lines. Just 
create a, a separation between the two sides. I mean, I don't know what design I wanted to do on this. Um, I, like I said, I was originally thinking a Darth Maul-esque uh, character. So we can go a little bit on the, the tribal designs. When I start doing makeup just on my bare skin, it's sort of like working with a marker. Um, and I, I like to sort of think when I'm doing it on the second layer, it's sort of like a crayon that um, it doesn't go on quite as smooth. It takes a little bit more work to get the, uh, the makeup to stay where you want. Um, and that's partially because there'll be a little residue of powder. And it takes uh, the oil in the makeup that you're working with to activate the makeup on the layer below so the two layers can bond. Uh, so it just takes a little bit more effort to paint the second layer, but it's going to uh, stay on, be a lot bolder. I'll do, do the same design on the blue side and it, you'll probably see the edge won't be quite as crisp and the color won't be quite as clear. which is why I like to, before going on to the detail phase, I like to powder it. Oh yeah, even on the stream, I can tell the difference between the one that's been set and the one that's not been set. It's a lot cleaner when it's set. It's a little bit properly. harder to, to work on the, the wet makeup. If your hand-eye coordination and your brush technique is right, you can, you can compensate for it. But I can do a lot finer details on the dried uh, powdered side with the uh, the same brush and the same sort of pressure and makeup amount. Normally, you don't have to hold the mirror, so I get trying to make sure you can still see it on the camera and not hit the mirror too much in my way. And the the brush handle hits the mirror sometimes. I see on the forums a lot of people talking about, hey, I have this con coming up in, in the week, week uh, 10 days, and I need to buy some makeup. What do I need to buy? Um, my best advice is figure that out early and practice. Um, I've been doing working with grease paint for 12 years, and um, I'm still getting my technique down better. But it's like if you're planning to do your makeup for the first time the morning of a con, this could take a long time. So uh, if you get your makeup a month in advance and you have four or five times to practice the design, practice the application, um, by the time the con comes around, you're going to be a lot more comfortable working with the makeup product and it's going to go a lot quicker and you're going to have a better result. So my best advice is to practice, practice, practice. Seems to be a common tip we're hearing with a lot of makeup. Practice, practice, practice. You guys, we're all stuck at home right now with like no access to the outside world. Why don't you take some selfies? Do it for the good of humanity. Oh yeah, now there's lots of drama with the black outlines.
a little bit more black. I don't know if we have any of the guys watching, but uh, guys can can learn how to do this too. That uh, makeup doesn't just have to be for the the girls and the Harley uh, and uh, Starfire characters. I've done uh, characters such as Beast Boy. Um, he's nice and green. That's an easy color to to do since uh, he's one color. I could definitely think of some applications for this kind of makeup. Grease paint seems to be the way to go if you're looking for a really bright, bold color. Yeah, like Beast Boy. Or I can even see like a more dramatic Harley Quinn. Like we saw a really kind of natural Harley Quinn with Rosie. I think he could be really cool to see like a more cartoony over the top one with grease paint. Well, one thing I like about the uh, grease paint is um, it is oil based. Once it's set, um, it's going to largely stay put. I do have oily skin, so I will bring extra powder and three, four hours into a con, I'll head to the, the restroom and powder the makeup that if you just apply a light powder and brush it off, that will reset the makeup. So as you sweat and the oils of your skin activate the makeup, um, by powdering it again, that will set the makeup so that it will last a little bit longer. You just have to avoid touching it, but it's like if you use a water-based makeup and it is 85 degrees outside and you're running around and it's hot and sweaty, um, that makeup, your sweat's going to reactivate the makeup and it'll start to, to drip. I've uh, done some of the products before and been out there and like I'm uh, dripping orange sweat. It's like you have Gatorade skin or something. So. Uh, the, the grease paint, uh, clowns use it in the circus, and like the olden day, the, the circus clowns were outside, 90 degree, degree weather, in makeup for three shows. And so the, the grease paint is designed to hold up in the weather, um, it, and then it, it can last all day. You, you do have to care for it. Um, I know there was a question during the last panel about... Um, what do you do or will the makeup get on your costume? Um, it's really impossible not to get ring around the collar. If you are got makeup on your neck, it's going to get a little bit on your shirt. Um, if you're wearing a wig, you'll get a little bit onto the hair of the wig. I wear usually wear a, a, a cap under my wig so the, my wig's not touching directly the, the skin. Um, but the, the grease paint, if you you treat it properly, can last all day. Cool. Those are some good tips. Yeah, and I see you guys sending in questions. Again, um, since this is a live uh, sort of makeup along tutorial, uh, we uh, I am taking your questions. Mike is not able to hear you right now as he's demoing, but um, don't worry, I'm keeping track because I totally want to know the answer to some of these things also. Yeah, I think Mike had mentioned that he is working on an original character uh, or an original design. So yeah, it's really cool to see this come together, just the two different sides, the different color combos. I was getting like Guardians of the Galaxy makeup vibes, and now it's gone swung full back into Star Wars with the really, really uh, deep blacks. I can't help but see Darth Maul. And anytime I use black, I like to use just a touch of white next to it. The two colors side by side can really, um, it, it makes them pop a little bit.
a little bit angle there. Oh, friend bear, did you miss our uh, Star Wars droid building panel? It was a very cool one. We uh, have a lot of Star Wars fans watching today and participating. Okay, now he's taking that white uh, that he was talking about to really pop those lines out. Um, it's funny, I actually, this is a great tip also for painting prop weapons. If you really want it to look super bright and metallic, go over it with a uh, white outline. It looks a little cartoonier, but if that's the look that you're going for, that really dramatic pop, it makes a huge difference right away. Yeah, friend bear uh, just commented. I see a lot of cosplayers using full body paint at cons and it always surprises me and how much effort goes into it. Yeah, I've only barely touched into the world of body painting personally. And it's there's a lot of skill. I mean, uh, I think Mike mentioned that he's been doing grease paint for 12 years. I mean, and he, and he, and he is saying that he's still learning. So yeah, you guys, while we're all stuck at home, uh, get so get out those grease paints, get out those uh, weird lipstick colors, start uh, painting stuff on your face uh, so you don't go insane, screaming endlessly into the void alone in your home. So you, you see just a, a, a little uh, bolder design. Um, don't, like I said, I, I was originally going for a tribal-esque uh, Darth Maul-like character uh, with um some bold black and uh red or i guess the other side blue colors um and the the one of the things i like about doing either a mashup or a uh create your own character or put them into a, a new universe is i don't have to be quite as screen accurate with my uh my makeup and my costuming that it could be a little bit more this is the makeup the way I want it to look or this is the makeup for my ability level uh, so that it's like uh, you don't have to stress out of well Darth Maul's got this exact shape and this is there and it's perfectly straight lines it's like well make it your design your character uh, your version of uh, Darth Maul so it's like in the past I did a totally blue Darth Maul so that's like if it was different as well yeah I'm his cousin or just another Maul character or whatever race he is so it's, it's it does, I didn't have to be him exactly um, that I may not qualify for the 501st or the Rebel Legion's purposes to because I know they're they're all about screen accuracy but mm -hmm. for my purposes of cosplaying for fun it's the character that I want to create and the design that I want to work with. Um, I think I will attempt to powder it so that I can work a little bit more on the blue side. Um, see if I could do it without completely creating a cloud storm of powder. Um, I keep my baby powder in a uh, Tupper, see, Tupperware con uh, container, a Rubbermaid container. Um, I have two different makeup powders, or powder puffs or whatever. This first one is a, I believe it's a rabbit fur puff. It's big, it's fluffy, and it will hold a lot of powder. So that I first use that, it gets a layer of powder on your face without it really touching the makeup. And then I use um, a, a, a smoother puff to uh, sort of set the makeup and press it into all of the creases of my skin. Uh, this is a big 
full face size. I do have a more compact size for the on the go if you don't want uh, quite as big of an area. Uh, I'm getting older and I do start to get wrinkles. So it's like before I powder or makeup, um, the areas I know I have to watch out for is I have creases in my forehead. So it's like the, the longer I'm doing the makeup and when I'm raising my eyes, it will create a crease in the layer of the makeup. And so it's like if I set the makeup right now, that crease will show up in the set makeup. So it's like sometimes you just have to touch the makeup and sort of smooth out the crease. The other area um, that's always important to worry about is the uh, lids of your eyes that um, as you open and close your eyes, the makeup will um, form creases as well. So it's like if you powder it uh, without, you'll have creases. So it's like it's important to sort of spread out the makeup again on your eyes. Some people have a, a line on their um, their cheeks or around their mouth. It's just sort of know your your skin and where your wrinkles and lines form and touch up those areas before you set the, the makeup so that they will get smooth out the lines. So the, the first step is you know, why, why work with someone else. I'll tell them usually take a deep breath in and slowly exhale while you're powdering. That way you're not breathing in the powder. Um, so that's like as you're exhaling, you're blowing the air away from your nose and your mouth so that you're not going to be breathing it in because you do, at least I, I probably over powder. I, I create the big uh, puff clouds, um, but you, you want to keep it out of your, your mouth and nose. So just so deep, deep breath in and breathe out slowly. Um, I find that's easier than holding your breath for 30 seconds to, to be on the exhale. Don't sneeze. Don't sneeze. Don't sneeze. That is like the size of a tribble on his face. Oh my gosh. Professional grade tools, you guys. So you see it's powder all over the place, um, but it, it has that first step. The, my goal is to get powder on the skin without it moving any of the makeup. Uh, so now I can sort of so press it in, the powder into the makeup to uh, get it to f further set and make sure you get the crease under your nose and corners of your mouth. Even for regular cosplay makeup, it might look really cakey if you're seeing yourself pressing in this much powder, but when you're really wearing heavy makeup, you have to. And a lot of cosplay looks do take heavier makeup. You're just gonna have things really sliding off your face very quickly if it's not properly set. So after I've applied the uh, powder, I guess I didn't bring both of my brushes with me. Um, but uh, the makeup is dry now. It's set. I don't have to wait three minutes for it to, to dry or anything. Once you've applied the powder and pressed it in, it's pulled the oils off, so it's uh, time to brush it off. Um, this brush, I thought I had a second one. This one is from an equestrian shop. Oh, let's see, where's the camera? So it's, uh, it's designed for horses that if you get a brush, the face of the horse that is a soft brush. Um, it says like I buy makeup supplies from weird places. Uh, the equestrian stores or the farm goods stores also have tax sponges, which are round sponges about yay big. Um, they're yellow and they're dense and they're good for working with face paints if you're using a water-based paint. Uh, so the equestrian store, the farm store, sometimes you'll you'll find stuff there that you uh, can't find elsewhere or you can find it cheaper there because they're going to sell it in bulk versus um, a specialty makeup store that only sells to a, a few people so uh, 
as a cosplay, I find I go shopping in weird places and I'm using sort of my eyes in a different way of, oh, you know, that would be a good texture for this costume or that I might be able to use that for this, <laughs> for this. So it's like, you'll find something in a, a, a pet store or a sporting goods department um, that you could use for your cosplay that's not really intended for cosplay, but um, colored socks and things like that are uh, in, in sporting goods stores and primary color shirts for some of the characters you can find in a uh, sporting goods store. So um, as a cosplayer, you, if, you're cos if you're closet cosplaying, you can go shopping in weird places. Uh, the other brush I use is a, it's a similar brush, but it's for babies. So it, that, the baby brush got, has a longer handle. It's like a, a real brush, um, but it's not quite as dense of a bristle pattern. And it's just a little bit softer to work with. Um, so it's like I, I use both. Um, and the baby brushes I, I get on Amazon, I uh, just uh, uh, look for, a, I think, just a baby brush and the wooden handle. So I just brush the powder off. Yeah, and now that he's got everything. It's going not to even do needed. a photo shoot right away after applying the makeup. Um, I'll usually take a hair dryer and do it on the cool setting and blow it while I'm brushing, and that will get a little bit more of the powder off. Then right now, if I was to take a photo and the, they were to use a flash, the powder, since it's white, is going to reflect just a little bit more. Um, so it's like if you're doing a photo shoot right after powdering, it's important to get as much of the powder off. If I was uh, going to get in my car and drive to the convention, I guess I can put my headsets on now, and that way I can actually hear what you say. It's not just going to be a one-way conversation. I could hear you slightly through the uh, the headsets. I had him on loud He's enough. He's back. But... He's back. No, no problem. Yeah, I've uh, been keeping track of questions and trying to elaborate on some things while you work. So, uh, yeah, if you're in a good place, we do have some audience questions for you about your process. Sure. Okay, let me scroll back up here. I've got them all marked. Um, Sorry, y'all, it's been going on for a second. Yeah, um, one of the questions we got really early was um, about removing this cosplay paint. Grease paint specifically, is it harder to get off? Uh, grease paint, uh, I guess I didn't bring it in here. I, I did a YouTube video last weekend, and I had the uh, baby oil in here. Uh, baby oil is oil. Any oil will reactivate the makeup. Um, I like a baby oil gel product. It's a little bit thicker that if you just take the pure baby oil and pour it in your hand, it, it oozes everywhere. But the uh, gel version is more like a uh, consistency of maybe a hair gel or something. And you could pour it into your hand and it's going to stay in your hand. And then you could rub it over your face. And that will reactivate all of the makeup. Um, so my normal technique is I'll w just go into the bathroom, dry skin, pour the uh, baby oil gel on my hand and rub it all over my face. Then I'll take the liquid hand soap, the, the soft soap kind, not the, like, the antibacterial uh, clear kind, but the, the, the soothing kind or whatever. Uh, again, adding no water, put the soap in my hand and rub that over my face. The soap breaks up the oil a little bit easier, and then I could take a damp cloth and rub most of the makeup off, I'll uh, apply a second layer of soap to it and and rinse it off again. Um, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I hop in the shower and I'm scrubbing with a washcloth and getting it all, all off. It's like, well, you don't want to take a layer of skin off. You're not like working with it with sandpaper. So if you reactivate the makeup with baby oil or any other oil-based product first before you apply soap, it's going to come off a whole lot easier. If you've been at a con all day, um, hot and sweaty, and you haven't powdered in three, four hours, you probably can just hop in the shower that the oils in your skin might have loosened up the, the, the layer that you could just use soap. But um, I find that if you activate it with oil, you're, you're going to 
get it off a lot easier and less damage to your skin in the process. Totally. Makes sense. Yeah, oil with oil. Um, and then we had some questions about what brands of um, makeup you like to use. And I know you mentioned Mayron, and then also how expensive um, grease paint is on average, if you can speak to that. All right. Um, grease paints, if you get it on Amazon, I think a container this size. Let's see, where's the camera? <laughs> There's a the camera. Um, this is 1.25 ounce. They're eight to twelve dollars, depending on the color, depending on who's selling it. Um, a, a, a makeup like this, I can get fifty faces out of each makeup. Um, like I said I don't stick my finger. I always use a brush or a spatula to scoop the makeup out of the container. So what's in the container is always clean. Um, so it's, I'm not just sort of going back and and getting more with my fingers and. Um, so I keep it clean, and this makeup will last multiple applications. So your $10 investment in one single color will get you a long distance. Uh, the more skin that you're covering, so it's like if you're covering your neck and your your, your upper chest and all that, uh, your ears and the back of your neck, you're going to use more makeup than if you just cover your face. But um, if you get 30, 40 applications out of it, uh, you do need to buy multiple colors so that you have every color that are, the, your character is going to need. And I would recommend getting black and white in addition to whatever color. If your character is orange, if you get a yellow and a red, you can brighten and darken the the orange with those two colors. So it's like get the complementary colors alongside it as well so that you're, you get your spectrum is, uh, with Face paints, the, the Mayron Paradise, which I use as a face painter, they have sea blue, sky blue, aquamarine blue, navy blue, royal blue, and with grease paint, there's blue. Um, they do have like a, a midnight monster blue or like a, a grayish color, but um, basically you have blue. You have red, you have pink, you have many shades of brown and flesh tone, but the, the primary rainbow colors, you just have one or possibly two colors. So, yeah. And I to. guess since these are oil paints, you probably can't mix them with non oil paint face medium. You kind of need to stick within the oils, right? Yeah. Uh, I stick within the oil. The, the only thing I do afterwards, um, I do have like um, some eyeshadow products. So, the powders can be applied after the makeup is set to further. Uh, define some of the colors so you could brighten some of the stuff up. Uh, so that's another approach that you can use to modify the color. But I mix colors on the fly that if I want a, a lighter blue, I'll work a blue and white on my hand and just sort of mix the two together. Um, I'm not super concerned of running out of like this special light blue because like, as I contour and add it, um, the colors of blend and you won't really see, hey, well, that's a slightly darker blue there over there because I have many shades of blue with the highlights. Cool. Uh, we have another question from Bedminster. Uh, let's see, where'd that go? Uh, they were asking about your big powder puff and where you got that. That thing is awesome. Um. I got that one from a clown supplies vendor uh, at one of the clown conventions. As I said, my my start with the makeup was in the clown industry. Um, so as I, I went to Mooseburger Clown Arts Camp in 2008 and 2009. I'm a member of the World Clown Association and Clowns of America, Mid-Atlantic Clown Association. So I go to their conventions when I get a chance. and. Um, they sell all of the, the products. They have Silly Farm, which is a big makeup company at a lot of the conventions, so you can get a, a variety of products. Um, I don't know if other makeup stores have the Rabbit Fur uh, Powder Puff. I've not seen it online, um, but. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, that that's a world I know almost nothing about, and especially considering you know how close it is to cosplay, if we have time and there are no other questions, I personally would love to know how you got into it and kind of more about clown conventions. All right, well, the 
I I was bored with uh, I, I I was single. I was bored. <laughs> my it's how we all lives. start. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, my, my family lives uh, in Chicago. I'm in D.C. So ha most of my vacations were to visit family at home. And I'm so like, aren't there summer camp programs for adults? It's like, how come kids get all the fun stuff? And I'm not going to go to Paris and just ride the tour bus by myself. I want to do something as a group. Um, so my first summer outing vacation was going to space camp. And so like that was the, the adult week of the kids version of Space Camp. The following year, I went to Universal Studios, had a acting program at uh, Universal Studios in California. So I went there and the following year I signed up for a clown camp. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing or like if I, if I want to be a clown, but it was a, a week long vacation program and it, it Every day we uh, they had a cloning 101 program, so they taught makeup application and how to design a face. And for again, cloning, their makeup design is about expressions. A traditional clown performed in uh, a big arena where the audience was 200 yards away, and they had to see what the clown was doing. So their face was over exaggerated they it was beyond theatrical exaggeration so that when they smile you see them smile when they frown you see them frown um, so it's all about where to put the colors and how your facial muscles work that when you raise your eyebrows how far up your forehead does your eyebrow go so like a clown doesn't just stick to their normal eyebrow level. They they put their eyebrows bigger and above their eyebrows, but it's important that they know where their face works and how it works. Um, so yeah, the, the clowning world is a dying art. Uh, the it and scary clown movement has hurt the industry, but a lot of them are into doing magic, into doing face painting and doing balloons. So a lot of their modern conventions, they will teach clown skits and makeup and have traditional clowns, but they will teach you how to make balloons, how to do face painting, how to do a caring clown hospital visit or nursing home visit. So uh, uh, one of my friends, they do napkin folding. They make roses, uh, sort of like an origami rose out of a napkin. Um, so. The, the modern clown convention isn't just clown skills anymore. It's spread out to uh, cover children's entertainment and parties. And I know a lot of cosplayers uh, give back that there's a lot of organizations. Um, I'm part of a group called Coslove, and they have events at the, the various military bases. We do a, a, a backpack distribution to the military families. So they'll have Spider-Man and Iron Man and Wonder Woman uh, showing up for these events. Uh, we've done the the movie premieres. We'll be outside a movie theater. We did Shazam last year, and I know they did the Avengers movie. I wasn't available, but so they'll get the Marvel or the DC uh, characters. They'll say, if you have a DC character and this is a DC movie, come out to the Alamo Draft House and greet the audience uh, members as they come in and go. Um, so. The, there's a lot of cosplayers that get involved in charity type events. Um, and so it's like I see cosplay and clowning can carry over one skill to the other. Uh, that's really interesting. I mean, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a clown convention. Um, I'm really curious, has your community been affected and has your, you know, job and these these things that you do, these uh, charity events, have they been affected by the pandemic and by COVID? Unfortunately, yes. Um, I had grand openings set for next weekend um, that have been canceled. This week, the World Clown Association was supposed to have their annual convention in Florida. They did, much like Con from, from Home, they're doing Facebook Live sessions 
um, all throughout the week. They had a person doing a ukulele instruction. They've had juggling, a balloon jam, and other activities just in the Facebook group for members because this was the week for their convention and they wanted to take advantage of the technology and the opportunity that a lot of people, uh, I have a daytime job, so I'm still working, but um, I'm saving two hours of not driving uh, my daily commute. So I do have a little bit more free time the last two weeks, but uh, it's important to, I think if you're home, it's important to continue to have fun. I've been posting a Facebook video every day that says, I'm not going to stop having fun. And I've shared a different face paint design or something I've done that day that is um, trying to spread the cheer and, and not just sort of mope around the house. So I think everyone, they're here. The, the message I've heard myself say, stay home, but do stuff, have fun, uh, work on a costume, uh, try, Try working with some makeup uh, if you have the products. Um, style a wig. Just do something to to keep yourself active, even if you can't go to these conventions. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Um, and I'm so glad that everyone is having a similar idea. Um, I'm so curious personally. Can you tell me what the name of that Facebook group is or that clown con so we can check it out? Um, I believe they're... Theirs is a members only group, but it, the organization is the Royal Clown Association. The Royal Clown Association. A world. Oh, world. world oh, okay. World Clown Association. That's really cool. Uh, definitely learned a lot about several topics over this panel. Um, yeah, is that, are there any more questions? Is there anything that I might have missed from our chat? Um, about grease paint or about the World Clown Association? Anything else uh, before we wrap up here? I really don't think we could have ended on a better note than that right there, personally. <laughs>